Hi there, welcome back. Welcome back to the third video in the Philips 461A restoration. This 85 year old lady has uh, really sort of um, made me dig deep into my knowledge and into uh, a few experiments as well. But it's been fun. I've enjoyed it. It's back to the basics of radio. Not quite. There are older stuff than this, but to me, this is the oldest one I've done so far. Now, when we left off last, we had done the uh, left section, that section over there. I checked the power supply. There were still a few things that needed doing inside the power supply because I needed to feed that end and I hadn't done that. Obviously, as you can see, that's been done. And uh, I'm going to show you a little bit uh, more close up what it is that, where it is that I've got to. And also an interesting thing that I found because if you recall, I had no shortwave. I have it now. We'll have it now. Before continuing, I just want to tell you about the sponsor of this video, PCB Away. My modest needs have been uh, more or less limited to the simple two layer boards at incredible prices and really quick turnaround time. But depending on what you want, you can go into the advanced PCB section where you can get anything from rigid flex PCBs, multi layers up to 40 layer boards, anything that you need, I'm sure you'll find there. They also do PCB assembly. So you can take your prototype all the way from design through to the manufacturing and assembly. Whatever you need for your prototype, you'll get with them. Links are in the description below. So what can we see that's different? Well, this side, as you recall, I had completed. So that was done. This needed some details. As you can see in here, there's no, no more of that old wire. I've completed the uh, wiring to the other side of the supply, the B plus and um, and there's a ground one as well. And then of course there are the heater wires, which I've uh, done in white again. So the heaters come from there, go across, and they go into the respective connection point. Actually, there's only one connection point on that side because there's only one tube, which makes it a lot easier. Unfortunately, it's right in there. But it does make it easier for me to come down along the edge, along the bottom. Again, the white ones have been twisted. And then they come across here up to the supply point here where it meets those two over there. There are also two wires coming off there in white, which is for the dial lamp. So that has also been wired up. And I did discover that the dial lamp was actually working. When I switched it on the first time, it wasn't because it wasn't well seated in there. All it needed was a little bit more twisting. It's one of those uh, screw threads. So that is done. That had been de-rusted. And now I've put it on. Those brackets are the brackets that hold the speaker. And I'll show you the speaker in a minute. But they are ready for the speaker to go in there and then get tightened down. But the important thing is this section here. It doesn't look too bad, does it? In fact, it doesn't look too bad at all. It was actually a lot easier than I thought. But let me show you some of the detail. As expected, I had all those capacitors to replace. There's no getting around that. But again, there weren't that many. They become pretty obvious in yellow over there. Just a side note. I actually think I made a mistake when I started this project. I ordered some capacitors from someone called Carl. The, uh, I think it's a, an eBay shop called Carl's Capacitors, and they are recommended by uh, Dave Tipton. I, I believe they supply from Australia, but I got them here really quickly. And these are the capacitors. They are pretty similar to the ones I use, but they are black. And I think I should have done them all in black. Now, the reason I've got these here, there's actually another one down there, which was a real bummer to put in. But the reason I've got these here is um, I didn't have the values that I needed for that bottom one, which is 15 nanofarads. And in the Carl's capacitor pack that I got, there was one and then I needed a 40 uh, nanofarad, so I used 6.8 and 33. The one that was here was about 200 nanofarads. It was completely over the top. And I think they look better in there than the yellow ones. But hey, I'm not going to redo it. But anyway, those capacitors are replaced. Another one here. And one, two, three at the bottom here. Again, no mystery, nothing too difficult. In fact, when you remove the big ones, the old ones, I mean, these guys are 
are pretty hefty. They take up a lot of space. When you remove it, you end up with a lot more space. Gives you a chance to clean the uh, chassis at the back and some of the wiring and some of the uh, pins. These are not IF transformers, I've discovered. These are actually just coils. I suppose the way they've done it here, the IF transformers are coils as well because they've got the trimming capacitors on the outside. But all these were cleaned. These wires that you see here were all, are all in perfect condition. They are not dried out. They don't seem to carry uh, much high voltage, so they haven't become brittle. The ones that do and that have become brittle, I have replaced, which really is just the ones going off to the other side. These were really bad and the heater wires as well. So that's been replaced. I've tried not to touch much of these or to bend them out of shape, try not to you know, disrupt the um, lead dress on here because that can give you endless problems. And then I faced a bit of a challenge and that was the switch because I believed that there was something wrong with the switch. I believed that something was broken here. And the reason I believed that is because, as I told you before, I found a very similar video by Don's old radio shed. And Don had done one very similar to this one, and he had the same problem. The difference was he got um, short wave. He didn't get medium wave and long wave. He ended up dismantling the switch, found that he didn't have to. He just had to replace the capacitor. But I thought I'd have a look at it because he did say, did say that he found some dry solder joints that just sort of broke off when he, when he touched them. So I wanted to make sure that wasn't a problem here. So I opened the, this plate out here. Now this plate here, there's two screws, one on this side, one on this side. This plate comes out and you see the first wafer. All you see really is one side of that first wafer because there are two wafers on here and they've got switches on both sides. So unless you are all in and you want to dismantle this whole thing, which I don't advise, don't do it. <laughs> I had no problems because I decided not to go any further. I tried, I checked some of these solder joints. There were two over here that looked suspicious, so I just touched them up. But that didn't bring back my uh, shortwave. But I know what it is. I'm going to keep you hanging just a little bit longer. And I'm going to show you what's happened with the others. They are working perfectly well. Let me prove it to you. So here we are. I've got it plugged in. I've got three light bulbs on at the, at the end there. Three of them. Getting brave. So we have our lamp coming up. Coming up. I'm still using this external speaker for now because I'll show you what I'm doing to the speaker. I'll have to just let something dry there. So let's see what happens. That's medium wave. That was a medium wave, long wave. Should have my beacon here. There we go. This is BBC Radio 4 from the UK. Okay, so, short wave, bugger all. So what was it? Let me show you the schematic quickly. Here we have the schematic as it is to, to date. There have been uh, a few parts here, like some of these coils that I checked when I was looking for the, for the problem, the short wave. I didn't mark them in. I was getting, I must admit, I was getting kind of desperate because this was, it was driving me crazy. It was driving me nuts. And then I decided to go and look at some of the instructions. I wanted to see whether, first of all, I wanted to see whether the oscillator worked. So what I did was I switched it on, put it on medium wave, 
brought the scope with a little coil of wire at the end, just, just you know, two or three turns of wire. And I put it near this, uh, this coil, or rather this uh, tube, and I could see the uh, oscillator signal and it would turn as I tuned. So it was going up and down, okay? And it was at about 270, I think it's 272 kilohertz, the IF for this, I can't remember right now, but it was that much above where the medium wave should be. I brought it down to long wave, I prodded it around again, and I found the signal. I then put it onto short wave, and there was nothing here. Uh, no oscillation whatsoever. So the oscillator was stopped. And I went and looked at the service instructions, and I read this whole thing. <laughs> And I read it with uh, with a phone up here on Translate, and it got to somewhere here. Where is it? There we go. That's okay. Here we go. They. This is the oscillator section. This is the front end section. Okay. They tell us which coils correspond to long wave, medium wave, and short wave. Then they tell us. Um, Frequency. This is the, uh, I think this is the IF trap. And then, okay, oscillator. This is the oscillator section for long wave, for short wave, or medium wave, and short wave. And it tells us S18 and S19, and it's tuned with C6, which is one part of that uh, tuning condenser. And it says here, C41 is in Geschaltet. So C41 is switched in. And I thought, huh, okay. It doesn't seem to be... There we go. C41 is kortgeslossen. It's left shorted or open. Kortgeslossen. So C41 is not used. And here it is used. So this was the odd man out. I thought, right, let's go look for C41. That should be easy, right? Wrong. When you try and find something here, <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy at all. C41, I couldn't find it. Couldn't find it, couldn't find it. And finally, I found it here. So it tells me that it's here. And it tells me C41, if I look at the schematic, where is C41? C41 is here. So I know that C41 goes from the top of the tuning condenser, C6, and it joins up with the grid. I think this is the first grid of that tube where R4 joins, okay? That's, that's the way I do it with these drawings. So I look for R4, there's R4. That is ground, so it's not that side, it's that one there. So I follow this line. There. Boom. Okay? So I know this point is uh, is one of them. And then C6 is that guy over there. That's one gang of the tuning condenser. So you follow it down, do, 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 it goes to there. So the C41 um, must be between these two. And indeed it is. It's one of those tubular caps with the center connected to one end and this sort of almost like a trimmer type thing that's painted over, connected to the other. It's that one there. Okay? I'll show you where it is on the radio itself. Following the instructions, the uh, drawing there, it should be quite easy, right? We go to C6, which is that guy. We know that it comes off here, and this is the wire that's coming off here, and it goes to that tag of that switch. We also know that R4 is down here, and the wire goes to that tag of that switch. So here is C41. Can you see it? Can you see it yet? Come on. Can you see it? No, you can't because it's not there. Some bugger took it out and didn't or removed a capacitor and didn't put it back. Now, I must admit, I, I looked everywhere. <laughs> I looked underneath. I looked in the back. I thought maybe, maybe there's, you know, it's one of those things you, you just don't see too well because they look like this. They are pretty small. They look like this, right? It's exactly what I'm looking for and it's not there. So I thought, okay, let me try something. So I got a, I checked what value it was. It's 100 uh, picofarads. I've got a um, 100 picofarad capacitor here. 
it's 500 volts, I think. Yep, 500 volts. And what we're going to do is we're going to touch it. So I'm like a priest. Do what I say, not what I do. Do not do this at home. I happen to know that there shouldn't be any high voltages there, but you should not do this at home anyway. I'm also not touching the capacitor. Wait till this warms up a bit. Okay. Medium wave, nothing, right? Short wave now, I mean, nothing. So I touch there. Ah, starts looking like it's promising, but still nothing. I've got to touch the other side. I don't want to get sure. I don't want to get shocked here. No, I'll do this differently. I'm being stupid. I'm being stupid. I'm being really stupid. Asking for trouble. I'm putting the capacitor on two crock lips and I'm going to connect them where they're supposed to go. One is to the top here and the other one is to, 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 to that point. There. Okay. Now let's see what we get. Hear <laughs> that? Whoa, this thing is strong. Sounds like BBC World Service. Bloody hell, this thing is... It's obviously that part of the band that's very active at the moment. We go up to the other end. I think we're going to higher frequencies now. It's actually getting right across the band. So there we go, folks. Our shortwave is back. <laughs> yeah. So this radio is going to have one modern silver mica cap here. These capacitors are very, very good. They, um, I seem to remember using them in uh, guitar pedal, guitar amps, guitar tube amps. They are expensive. They're fairly expensive, these, compared to normal ceramic caps. But I don't want to use a, a cheapy here. This thing holds its value very well. This is in the oscillator, so I don't want it to drift. I think these will be the best. So I'm going to put it there. This is a very uh, short gap here. It'll fit nicely in there. It won't look the same as these monsters over here, but these monsters are staying because they look good. You've got to have something to remind people that this is an old radio. And uh, this will have the modern capacitor in there. And then we're finished with the side. And here it is. She sold it in there between those two points. Uh, it's very small. It's black. It doesn't show, so it's going to stay there, and uh, shortwave is back, which is perfect. I'm happy. I opened up the speaker, and I removed the cloth. Pretty dirty, but it's been washed. The patina is all there. <laughs> I'm not going to build a new one. I don't have the uh, sewing skills that Dave Tipton does. He did one of these recently. And he got to use um, a sewing machine, which um, I envied him. I actually did. This thing was in very good shape. Look at this. It's in perfect condition. There's not a tear. There's not a ding. It's not rubbing. The only things that were wrong, if you can call it that, were a few specks of rust on this uh, edge here, which is what marked the cloth over there. So I got rid of that. And I've actually put in an anti-rust protection, 
which in this case it takes about 24 hours to dry. So I can't put it back yet. The back is being cleaned. This side is all being cleaned. So this will be ready tomorrow for me to complete it. I'm going to fix that. That looks bloody awful. I don't know what they did here. It's connected there and then they, instead of just soldering it there, they, they must have cut it or something. I don't know. We'll see. So this thing is ready to be fixed up and put on the chassis. And I'm actually quite keen to do that because I believe the sound's going to become a lot better. It goes in here, the, this bracket comes off and you put it in, you tighten it down. So it goes in here. And the reason I haven't put it in before, obviously, is because I had to work on these sections and clean up the back here, which I've done. So I didn't want to, you know, interfere with that. By the way, about this uh, <laughs> cable tying. <laughs> I've got three types of cable ties here. I'm still getting the hang of it. This is a different one to that one. That one's a different one to that one. Somebody asked me to show them how it's done. I really can't. I really can't. Um, I looked it up on the internet. There are a lot of very good guys doing it. A lot of people worked in the aerospace industry and uh, for NASA and all sorts of stuff. They've got all the tricks and they show it in great detail. Go and look it up on YouTube. <laughs> so uh, when I get this perfect, I'll probably be using it. I like it. I like the fact that it looks neat. I might even redo the whole lot. I'm not sure. It all depends on how the rest of this restoration goes, because now I've come to a point where I need to, after I put the speaker in, I need to look at the alignment and the cabinet. Cabinet I'm not too worried about, except perhaps putting the dial cord for the indicator, the dial indicator on. I remember Don had a, a hell of a problem with that. Somebody else has mentioned that as well in the comments. It's, it's a nightmare, apparently. But it should clean up quite well because there's nothing broken there. It's just Philite, it's not Bakelite, apparently. Bakelite was a different patent. Philips had a they had their own. They call it Philite, if it's I think that's how you pronounce it, Philite. And um, one of uh, one of you told me that uh, you live in the town where uh, Philips is or was based, and everything was made with Philite, including you know door handles and all sorts of stuff. So oh, that's the wet. So um, I need to look at the how this uh, alignment goes. And I, I've got an idea. I think I know how it works. And it shouldn't be that difficult. But I'll have to just study it a bit, bit further and then get back to you. So for now, I'm going to say goodbye. And I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. Links at the back of the video and in the description below. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.